say it out. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I've always wanted this. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and get started. Natalie, I'll have you call the roll. Tanya Fairley. Present. Reese Isbell. Here. Daniel Munoz. Present. Jacob Rosofsky is absent, but we have a quorum. Can we, Sabina, elect a chairperson with, with the chairperson being gone because he's the only option that can be a chair? Or should we wait and do that at the next meeting so he has to accept? Yeah. I mean, oh. he doesn't I mean, have a choice. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we'll wait. You can, I would say you can go ahead with it. If he declines later, then we can do it again. Perfect. How about that? Okay. If he declines, then we got to find somebody to join to be the chair. Right. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, because we're all already chairs. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we can go ahead and elect a chair then. I would nominate um, Jacob Rostovsky to be chair. I second. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. think you can. I okay, can I, nominate. Well, you, that's or, I forgot I wasn't a committee member. <laughs> I will nominate Jacob Rostovsky. I second. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> public. No. No. There's no public. All right, Natalie. Tanya Fairley. Yes. Reese Isbell. Yes. Daniel Munoz. Yes. Okay, in, in uh, absence of a, our chairperson who regrets that he was not able to join us today, um, I will go ahead and assist. Is that all right, Sabina? Okay. So we, um, as you know, this is our first committee meeting of our um, DEI committee. Um, I know that um, as just an update, the Department um, of Consumer Affairs has obviously taken a very strong position on um, DEI and we have recently been asked to include it in our strategic plans. So we are in the process of, of doing that as well. I again think we're ahead of the ahead of it. So we've you know we've already created our committee and have had several discussions at board meetings on this. Um, so that we're I'm, I love it when I get a strategic item that I've already started. <laughs> Can check that off. Um, but we want to um, just open it up now for any comments on from our members who have graciously joined us on this committee. Um, just as any uh, opening remarks from each of you. Well, I'll start, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm glad to see that this is um, being added to our list of responsibilities. Um, I do, um, I'm excited to see where it takes us and the information that we gather and how we can best serve the public with having this um, included in, in, our, in our list of responsibilities. Yeah, so for me, I'm just really excited that we, you know, find ourselves in this work, that we see ourselves as um, also advocates to promote DEIA, um, the A being access, um, and just making things accessible. And that I know that in my work world, we add the A in there. But um, it's going to be great for both us as a board to be accountable that we are providing equitable and inclusive services to licensees and then in the parallel process that licensees are providing equitable spaces for um, their clients and so just on those two levels that everyone here in california we're going to be the leader in what it means to be inclusive in all spaces so i'm excited for that and <clears throat> thank you and i would just add um uh, this is an incredibly important committee to me. I'm very excited that we are um, establishing it and um, <clears throat> putting it forward. And I look forward to working with Jacob in his new role as our chair. I, hope he's um, <laughs> I would say also, um, you know, my my day job is working in health equity for the San Francisco Department of Health, um, and I just attended last week the first ever health equity conference here in Sacramento of all the local health jurisdictions around the country, around the state, all 61 health jurisdictions, there's 58 counties and three health, city health departments. Um, and it was a fascinating event of over 200 people who are working on equity issues in their local communities um, and all that entails. So for instance, um, working on it in San Francisco is very different than working on it in Calaveras County. 
And so mm -hmm. that's fascinating and, um, and uh, informative. Um, and uh, we're in the health department is just getting started on that, but they have a huge commitment, the state health department. Um, so I'm, I was pleased about that, and I'm pleased that we're taking this on in our role and um, finding more about our DEI um, possibilities uh, within our localities around the state and um, how we can um, uh, foster um, more communication and DEI work um, at the state level through this board. So thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Moving on to a discussion on how to collect data on our underrepresented communities. So we put together some information under item number four, and we came up with a draft survey of what we could send out to our licensees via email. And obviously it's not something that's required. It's something that um, people would volunteer to do. Again, we have hundreds of thousands of licensees, so I'm, I would think we would get a pretty good turnout. But that could be, you know, we had talked about this at the board meeting about really what do we know, you know, what, what are we, what's our focus? So we um, put together this survey and would like the committee's thoughts on what questions we have that we would send out to licensees. Yeah, I like this idea that it's a really good place to start that we're not assuming we know everything. Right. The, where we start is from that place of being learners. And as we do this, I just want us to, I want to invite us all to think about there is no such thing as a DEIA expert. This is not something you become an expert in. This is an always learning journey. So just leading with that. We never have to have all the answers, but we need to like learn how to listen to people to hear what's going on. Like storytelling is a big piece of DEIA work. So with all that, I love that you want to start with, let's hear from people. Let's, let's see who we have as a demographic. Um, I do like that we opened up options on the gender identity. That's important there. And then I do like the open-ended questions at the end about what our licensees are looking for from us. So I just wanted to put those two things out. Um, <clears throat> um, if I, I, before we get into the specifics of this, uh, could you tell us a little bit more, or maybe that's part of our discussion of how this is going out, um, how this would be um, sent out or what have you? So we would send this out via email, and it would be sent out. We have a SurveyMonkey um, account, so we would develop it on SurveyMonkey and send it out as a, is that right, Allison? OK. And we would send it out as a link in an email to everybody that we have an email address for. Okay. And probably like a post that it went out, mm -hmm. like promoting it. Yeah. Yes. And, and it would be? similar to the language that's here as far as the introduction of what it is. Um, you know, I'm assuming at the top of the email it would explain right. why we're asking these questions. Exactly. Okay, great. Um, uh, can I get into some specifics of the survey? Okay, thank you. Um, on item, our uh, question number four, um, this is just a grammar thing, but I think um, we can switch to to with and take out the with at the end. Um, <clears throat> wait, wait, say it again. Uh, with which gender identity okay. do you most identify? Oh. Got it. Um, and take out the two. Um, uh, question number seven, um, I think to be um, equitable, um, we should probably capitalize lesbian and straight, um, oh. even though they're after the Got it. such. Um, question eight, uh, where were you born in the, were you born in the United States? Um, I was wondering, um, do we want a follow up that says, if not where, can we do that? We can. Okay. Um, number nine, um, <clears throat> this question, uh, puzzles me and not to say anything about the writing of it, but just are we trying to ask people their primary language spoken at home or at work or what was their first language? 
um, obviously at work matters since it's related to salons. Um, so I, I, I just wonder if we might want to rethink the way we phrase that. I see where you're coming from. I think it should be what is their first language is what we're trying to gain. Or, or primary because their first language yeah. might not be their primary yeah. anymore. That's true. Yeah, I think just you have primary language spoken. Yeah. Like, so that's the one I want to communicate in. Yeah, or, and you can even add that like that you want to receive, that you prefer to receive information on or like, because we're just looking at how many folks do we have with different languages, right? And by bilingualism or all of that. Right. Yeah. Just to make sure we're offering enough information in those languages too. I'm thinking maybe even like language spoken. Well, that's how you like to receive communication. I hear what you're saying, but how do that's we? That's a survey, so I would yeah. definitely if you if, if all we want to know is what is the language because yeah. we're doing a survey on a language, then primary language what is your primary language would be what encompass what they what they're most comfortable with what they use the most regardless of if they're at home or in the salon right so so should we take off the word spoken yeah maybe what i think primary so primary language yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. well i i was going to bring up actually following this conversation i was going to bring up e chinese and say if we're talking about spoken the two largest are mandarin and cantonese and so we might want to break that down. But if we are just talking about without the word spoken, if we're just saying primary language, then I think Chinese is probably OK. Um, it depends yeah. on. Actually, Because hmm. in the other, they could break it down if they wanted to put Mandarin or because yeah. so there's the other option on the next page. So we want to know what language they actually speak. Yeah. OK. Right. But I mean, then it would be fine as it is. I, I understood it, like what is your primary language spoken? Because they might have this, and then of course they might speak English next, but what is their primary language? I'm fine with that. I think maybe we should separate, um, we should maybe say Mandarin or is it Cantonese? Cantonese? I mm -hmm. think we might wanna put that because that's an important distinction with our translations. Um, we haven't, you know, translated stuff into Mongolian, for instance. We have some stuff in Farsi. Um, but I think when we tabulate this data, I think we might want to know. I, I, I think it's important. Um, of it, the, historically, California um, had a great deal of um, Cantonese language spoken, but more and more as more um, people come from China, um, the majority of them speak Mandarin, so it is a, a distinction. The schools, the yeah. schools yeah. are Mandarin um, immersion programs. There's okay. a Cantonese immersion program. So we can make that change. Yeah. I think on number 10 also, have you experienced any acts or discrimination, or it should be of, any acts of discrimination or bias when interacting with the board? It says or, or. And then just on that, um, I also have another philosophical question. Uh -huh. At the end, it says, with the board. Um, do we mean like with us directly, or do we mean within the community overall, or um, with other salons? I don't know. I, uh, it, it could be anything. I would personally, we'd like to know um, with all of us, staff, or you know, the board members. Um, I would actually recommend we change, we put state in front yes. of board yes. because everyone knows us as state board. Yes. So that would make it clear who I think then our licensees would know exactly who we're talking about. They call us state board. I like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, those are my comments. Thank you. <laughs> Super helpful. Any other comments? I, we don't have any public comment. Um, number 11, um, you might want to add state board to yes. what you suggest state board make to promote the rest yep, of the perfect. In the industry. All right, moving on to 
item number five, which is um, something that we put together with um, on uh, uh, <laughs> creating a handout um, to promote our DEI mission. And so we have drafted um, proposed content that we are open to any suggestions if you have any. This is information that we've you know looked at what DCA has put out. We've looked at other um, entities who have same type of mission. And so we would like to take this content and make it into a pretty flyer that we could hand out. So any um, comments on any of this content? I do if no one else has. <laughs> Um, reading through it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, um, uh, and just technical things. So the um, first paragraph: California ho is home to the largest and most, not more. Um, then on the fourth line, um, we say the board would also like to encourage licensees to promote the EI in their establishments. I'm wondering if if that's the language we want to say as far as promoting um i think i think of it more as like um supporting or being open to uh the diversity of the community kind of thing but i'm open to what people think um i just it it, it struck me weird is to say promote it mm -hmm. i'm open mm -hmm. promoting is like a, sort of this forward action thing versus like embracing or folding it into what they're already yeah, doing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah, so I get it. It's like embrace or support. Yeah, or welcome mm -hmm. or be Welcome. Open. Yeah, it just, yeah. I see. But I do. Well, I think that, I think too that, I mean, we have, I'm, I'm feeling like we have to be careful in an instance, are we telling them to embrace something that may not be within their religious standpoint, well, maybe, so is it more of a thought process that we want to give them, or is this a mandate? Well, it's not a mandate. Right, but, but reading it to me, yeah. reading, it, reading this to me, it would tell me that as a licensee, I have to promote this, and I don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. Or even just how it says, like, would like to encourage, so that's definitely not mandate language, um, encourage licensees to reflect or consider I like oh, the word embrace. Does embrace? Yeah, embrace. Embrace. That works for mm -hmm. me. But encourage to me right there tells me you don't have to. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah, also, I think either we want to say values after inclusion or we want to say um, of the community. Um, just saying we embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion um, of what? Um, well, DEI I, stands by itself. Is that what you're saying? Like, well, I'm just saying it, it, I was thinking DEI values in their establishment, but I'm open to that too. Values is okay too to promote do, diversity. Are, are we okay with just DEI and inclusion, well, inclusive I think values? If you add the word values, that value is different to everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you say sure. DEI, then it allows them to look directly at what diversity, equity, and inclusion means. Okay. I don't know. The word value, like my value, my moral, it may be different than your value, your moral. But DEI is kind of plain. Mm -hmm. DEI spells out what's diverse, what's equity, right. what's inclusion. Yeah. And I think that word embrace, going back to it, just leaves it kind of open and neutral. Okay. To embrace diversity, equity, inclusion in their establishments. I also think we could um, soften it a little bit by removing the would also like to, because like, it's like saying the board would also like to. Oh, yeah. and just say <laughs> the board encourages licensees to embrace diversity, equity, perfect. and inclusion. Yes, yeah, right. persuasive. Get away from persuasive. I know Thank I'm you. editing our own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fifth time's a charm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always say I'm in draft mode. <laughs> I, I might take something back, I said. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, as, if that's okay, on the next item, um, two paragraphs down, um, the end of the sentence says language skills. I don't think we need the word skills. I think we can just say language. I agree. 
Um, and then on, um, under the what can I do section, under creating um, an a welcoming space, um, the last sentence, um, we say, in addition, you can display flags to show the community that you are an ally and they are welcome in your establishment. Um, saying that you are an ally assumes that you're not part of the community. Um, so I, I, I th and I don't know that, um, I, I would say if we're gonna say something like that, I, I would prefer that all are welcomed versus specifying who you are. Um, just, uh, you can display pride flags to show the community all are welcome. Okay. Just make it simpler. Yep. And those are my thoughts. I want to know what your thoughts are, especially maybe Tanya, because you're in the field. But like with the like neurodiversity, you know, I when I worked for the regional center, we had a lot of clients with autism and things like that. They would need to go get barbering service. So, just wondering, like, are we promoting also any needs around folks that have like hypersensitivity to light, sound? Well, um, that's when when I was looking at this. Mm -hmm. For me, inclusion is disabilities and all that. But when I look at this section here, when it says display the pride flag, then it seems like it's, it's just, it's just, just that. Um, so I, from the, an industry standpoint, um, we took our pride flags down, unless it's the celebration of the month, because in inclusion, you, and you, when you say, cause on here it says religion, there's, you 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 actually put religion in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in some religions, it becomes offensive. Mm -hmm. So certain things that as a salon owner, we have to be careful of, even in our inclusion phase, mm -hmm. that requires us not to pick a side. Right. So some things we, Yes, you hear me. Exclude unintentionally. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's the um, uh, it's the unknown biases that we as salon owners and, and owners of the establishment are also battling against when it comes mm -hmm. to DEI. With that being said, um, I still feel this is very suggestive, as if you are giving a giving the establishment directions versus allowing them to be free okay. to um, decide what that looks like in their space because the minute the board makes a suggestion, it then becomes law even though we know it's not law. Got it. Um, so again, it says one of the things you, you said here, like if they are, um, if they refer to themselves as, as, where did I just read it at? Uh, I have my paper marked on my phone, but then I, oh, yeah, right here. Um, use an individual's preferred pronouns and name. If you're unsure, then ask. Well, as a salon owner, I'm not opening up that conversation. I allow them to give me that conversation. So I would never tell my staff to ask, what do you prefer to be called by? When they book an appointment, their name is there. That's what we call them by, okay. by their name. So I think that as... We, and I, I just taught this um, for L'Oreal <laughs> um, because of the same, mm -hmm. the same issue of, yes, we want to be inclusive, but now you're excluding owners right. and you're excluding people who do not support, mm -hmm. whether it's race, religion, you know what I mean? So that's a, um, yep. wording is very important. Got it. You could do like it, it. It's really good here if you like going straight to the suggestion. If you have client forms, uh, consider updating them so clients can share their preferred name. And Most pronouns. of us do not have client forms. We're so automated now. Everything is online. They book their appointments on ninety nine. I would say ninety percent. There's still a small old school style of a salon who's who are out there who still do paper and pens. But for the most part, um, but even an online form can ask a pronoun, right? But it's a computer. It's a. We, it's like it's like we use Breeze. Yes. Like we use Vagaro. Like that mm -hmm. online form is not. It says, "What is your name?" Mm -hmm. Period. 
It's yeah. not a Mr. Mrs. He, she, they, it, it's none of that. And I would even just suggest then putting like honor people's pronouns. And then you can take out the word preferred, use an individual's pronouns and name. Well, that part's not the problem. It's if you're unsure, then ask. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. Taking I'm that saying part out. That, yeah. And then just put uh, honor clients' pronouns, period. And then if you have any, if you have client intake form, because some might still, it's something to think about. And then you can, um, okay, so use an individual's pronouns and names, done. And then if you have client intake forms, update them and then remove gendered language for marketing and branding. And if you want, I don't know, this would be like I'm in draft mode. You could also say consider using gender neutral language like they mm -hmm. or client. So you could even put a suggestion in there for people because they're like, well, what do I use? You could just put they, them or client. Um, I'm agreeing with a lot of what's being said. I, I think um, taking a step back, um, I've had some concerns with this section myself as well. And I think um, <clears throat> as I'm thinking through it, my, my biggest worry is that um, it sounds like we're telling people what to do. Right. Um, and I know here at the top we say, here are some suggestions. Um, but then we sort of put it in a verb form of spread and create and use. Um, I think just on a, on a minor language note, we might want to add ing to each of those. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying create, we would say creating a welcoming space as an, uh, or using or taking, um, just so that it doesn't sound like we're telling people what yep. to do. Um, <clears throat> because I think we, we need to, we don't want to force the issue right. of DEI on people. That's not the point of DEI. Right. So um, we want to, and, 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 and it may be that you all might want to play around with yeah. some of this language in this section altogether. Yeah, I think um, so. Because I think um, I, I, I have some concerns about trying to force DEI down people's yeah. throats yeah. when it's, when it really what we're trying to do is encourage. Right. Yeah. Um, now for well, me, I appreciate the forwardness to start first and then go backwards. And I like that you did not back down from this. This should. This is exactly how it should be. Right. But okay, let's go back. But I would think, so that part, but else I just have a, a question. So here, um, it, it can be like, here are some suggestions of ways you can help clients feel more um, welcomed in your establishment. I would go that way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that way it's always on the client. Like here are ways the client could feel more this way with you. So with your client, consider this with your client. So it's... Okay. Not us, it's this is what clients say that they need. And it's true, right? Who All of us that go into a salon want to be all of these things I want when I go into a salon. Yeah. So I will play devil's advocate because of the industry we're in. Um, we have a barber shop that's very close to us. And um, they, have a, they, they say clearly this establishment will make jokes this establishment will yeah. do this this establishment will do I've that and it says if you don't have a thick skin please do not enter why do we go over there we go over there for the laughs and the kicks and giggles this right here will basically say to them or to, to change, to change yeah. who they are and people who don't like that already don't go there mm -hmm. right so again when you're talking about this environment it's totally different than going into a dentist office where there's only one person in there and there mm -hmm. this establishment and on one on Saturdays we I personally myself see 20 people on a Saturday I have five other stylists so the type of the type of community that we create is based on who we are as stylists mm -hmm. so I get this I'm struggling with it because I feel like you're telling soon as this comes to me as an owner I'm seeing well, what makes you think I don't spread kindness? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, what makes you think I am welcome? Everyone who comes in here feels welcome. They look on the internet. Everything yeah. about me is welcoming. Yeah. So I think that we have to be careful and, tr and tread when it comes to state board because we already don't like you, right? including me.
but I love us. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm saying yeah, this as you guys may not understand what I'm saying, but when they say state boards in town, everybody freaks out and they get mad, right? Yeah. So to have something to come in to dictate the atmosphere in a salon environment is going to take some um, very different direction. That's why direction. this is called good trouble. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing, part of this here is um, the gender pricing. Because I know this has been a battle for years. Right. So if adding this in here, what you're going to get from salons is like, well, why are you putting this in there now? It's been like this for 25 years, okay. right? So example, you walk into a, a barbershop is strictly for men per se, but it's not because there are women who get shortcuts. Right. So what this gender pricing basically says is like, I can't have one price for women, one price for men. I should have shortcut, long cuts, buzz cuts, clipper cuts. Right. So this has never been enforced in our industry, even though we know there's an act. Right. So putting that with this is like, okay, now you're Got it. piling on the resistance that may come. I mean, do we embrace it? Yes, because mm -hmm. we're all about making sure everybody feels yep. comfortable, but we're gonna do it in, a, in our way. The way I'm thinking about it is something like um, Heritage Months, um, you know, like API Heritage Month mm -hmm. or Women's History Month or something like that, where we can provide examples of things they could do. It's a good idea. Uh, but yeah. it's not, you must post pictures of women during Women's History Month. It's more like, you could, this is right. an opportunity to value women or something like that. Right. But, you know, with that kind of concept um, of, you know, should you want to, this is API, well, Heritage Month, you know, or something like that. Um, yeah, that's okay. more of where I'm thinking about it. Too. I think that's great. This has been very, very helpful for us. Yeah. So I think um, we have some work to do. Let us revamp some things and take this all in and um, we'll come back to the next committee meeting and, and have a, a mm -hmm. additional information to yeah. to talk but I think this is exactly what we needed from this committee this is a really good direction because I sit on the other side as a therapist hearing people's experiences going into public places and being misgendered and dead named and having all kinds of microaggressions it's not fun and we don't want to tailor tailor this to the industry's comfort we really do need to make sure when clients come in they walk away not feeling less like of a human or been told in some mm -hmm. way they're excluded right and so I, I do think we, this is a good direction and kind of don't like back down or water it down for people's comfort. Any DEI work we're doing at any time is going to be uncomfortable for some mm -hmm. people because we've been so engrossed in these practices. Like you can watch a movie from the 80s and cringe, right, half right. the time. But we have to keep it moving because right. we don't want to be stuck there. So good job. I feel like this was a good start. And thank then we'll you. work it out. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you all. Yeah, this has been exactly what, what we needed. I just think that I, we were having this conversation and one of the things that happens a lot when people are talking about DEI or trying to understand DEI &I is when you get into the specific genders of people and you're talking about religion because those two seem to be the ones that clash right. quite a bit in our industry, right? And so you, you definitely have to figure out the wording and the verbiage to yep. allow that that person who has a strong religious background to make that decision yep. versus someone who is, you know, really inclusive of all. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it ha be, but because you are our governing board, it makes a big difference in how we perceive. I that. agree. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and it does make a difference. Like you, you, you can think that oh, because you're going into a a barber shop and I'm a woman and there's all men and they're having their discussion. Well, I'm walking into that. They should not have to change because I'm a woman. Well, <clears throat> I somewhat disagree with yeah, that. I want to challenge that. <laughs> um, I think that our we need to provide as much information as possible to our industry folks on how they can be welcoming to clients. And in in that scenario, if a woman does walk in the um, to a male salon. Our response isn't, well, you don't belong here. Our response is, um, how do we make this a welcoming environment for who just stepped in? Um, 
I know that may not be what you want to hear, no, but it's from not that. it's I'm just saying in general, when we're putting this scope together, that we can't exclude how we are in our industry overall. We can't exclude that. And certain language in here would basically tell me as a as a salon owner that I have to take away from where I've been to accommodate a situation. So that's all I'm saying is that. Right. And my what I'm saying is that um, these are suggestions from us on how to make their space more inclusive of anyone that steps in, mm -hmm. even if they don't want to be inclusive. We're just providing the background and information on how to do that, should they want to do it. Should they right. want to do it. But yeah. my thing is, is that because it's coming from a governing board, it's perceived differently because the environment that the salon and the nail salons and the hair salons, it's a different mm -hmm. environment that you are giving this information to and how it could be perceived based on the wording. So yes, I hear you, but as a, and, and, if, and I can say this, as a woman, I'm walking into a barbershop, I'm already now, I'm going to a barbershop, <laughs> right? Because I know I'm walking into a male dominant establishment. This is what they do, this is a, right? Doesn't, it, doesn't mean I shouldn't walk in there. I know what I'm walking into, right? But it also doesn't mean that when I walk in there that they have to make me feel any type of way, whether include me in conversation or include me in that. I, I know what I'm walking into. In this environment, if this comes from the board, the going to the barbershops or whatever, and, and I use barbershops just to pick on them, but um, the, inf the, the language in this what to do sounds as if it's being dictated on how I'm supposed to run my establishment and that's where you're going to get well because if you're going to be like male identified and go into a nail salon and say I would like my nails done but nails is I don't universal. want we're going to talk about like in other settings too we were just talking about barbers but I'm thinking about other things like I want that salon to be like sure what do you want like hey I'm just here to provide a service Right. And I just so it versus someone fighting it like you're a guy, you want you want nails. I, I don't want people to go into places so, it, you know, and not get treatment. So systemic racism is we are a system that upholds racism. And so to kind of back that up, I think with what the governor's trying to do is we have to be the first ones to embrace it because we are system. We are the system. <laughs> and so we're not taking a stand who will. Because that's why people are fighting so hard, because the fight is done at the community level, but systems get to still play the way they do. So it is us that has to be brave and say, we are going to also start to look at ourselves and be accountable. Um, and that extends to you and then to the client. So I do think we, we are going to have to have some language in here to encourage people to start thinking about this. But I would also say that... I mean, you don't have to. A client can go, not come back to you. They can go to someone else who's inclusive. And then if you, and, and in fact, more inclusive places and inclusive teams are 30% more productive and take in more money. So for you, it's financially advantageous for you to have an inclusive space. So, I mean, I, I think we don't want to back down. What I'm saying is don't water down so much that we don't actually do the work. We're just performative at this point. Yes, and I, I, think, I think we're all saying the same thing. I know... Um, it, it sounds like maybe you're saying something different, but I think the the issue is how we speak to our industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're all agreeing that it's more of providing information and suggestions and not telling them right. you have to do these things. And mm -hmm. that's where you're coming from with your concerns is they'll feel like they're being told what to do. Because it's um, coming from the board. Sure, but at that, I don't think that necessitates us stopping our work on promoting DEI. Yeah, we don't have any prevalence information about how many would be challenging us or anything. Right. Like I think that, we so. just need to provide the information and offer opportunities to learn about DEI. Whether they accept them or not, that's on their terms as long as they're following the law. Mm -hmm. And I, I, as we're listening to this conversation, which is again exactly what we needed, you know, we put this together thinking it would be a good handout, but maybe a handout isn't appropriate. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a section on our website where we mm -hmm. can put some content right. together, and then maybe we do a social media campaign mm -hmm. where it is a little more specified, and, and you know, we could talk more about like give, giving suggestions, like 
little little um, bites of, of suggestions as opposed to um, a document that's handed out that makes it look even more yeah. official. Like we're telling you to do yeah, something. Agreed. I totally get that and it worries me. Is it worth a conversation with the associations also, perhaps? I don't know what, if anything, they do in terms of suggestions like this. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would know and your staff would know, but I'm not sure. Um, but you could do, like you said, accessible on the website for those who want to access it and then maybe the social media also give a snippet oh and if you want to check out more go to our website yeah yes yeah can we um adding this because this is falls under here the gender pricing yeah i totally agree with what you're saying um either the board's going to help enforce that no or we're going to leave this alone <laughs> You know what I'm getting yeah, at. We don't have the authority. Yeah, there. and so, but putting this here in this document sounds yeah, as agree. if it's putting it all in there. I agree. Um, yeah, but I think we could promote. So that's promote what I was going to say. So, yeah. that, so, that, so that would be my suggestion: is promote gender pricing right. or promote, not promote. It's not gender pricing. It's it's taking away gender. It's right. it's actually the opposite. Right, it's, right. It sounds as if they're promoting. No is basically, and I'm guilty of this, like I, reading this again, I'm like, darn it, I was supposed to change that again anyway. But I have on my website men's cuts, because typically men are my shorter clipper, right. and then I have women's cuts. So even me as a salon owner of 32 years, yeah. am guilty of this, but then on the flip side, it's like, but in my mind, it needs to be this way. But then in reality, if I'm going to make a change, I need to change that too. Uh -huh. So, but yeah, this right here, yeah, we should not. Put these two I agree. In the same, uh, I totally see what okay. you're what you mean. Yeah, no, I hear that too. I just I want to point out too, like the success this can have because there were some times when there was a lot of racial tension in the U.S. You know, and with Latinos and things like that. Mm -hmm. My own grandparents were victims of a racially motivated mass shooting, um, so I lost my grandfather at the El Paso Walmart shooting because of the shooter saying that uh, Latinos were invading. So I know this is very real, and it was like the worst case for my family, right? Just for being Latino in that checkout line. He was aiming for them. Uh, but at that time, it was hard. My hairstylist, she identifies as a white woman. She was so kind, caring, listen, like even with all the tensions, because, you know, the little space you have in your salon is a microcosm of the world. These two people come together. And she was just so accepting and warm during that time and wasn't pushing anything, nor was I. And it was a success for us. And we kept, was able to go back to her working through the time, especially around George Floyd and all that. Like we just came from very tension, like a lot of tense times. Mm -hmm. uh, but that success right there, right? She created this warm, welcoming, inclusive environment. Uh, it didn't affect our work at all. And she was, I stayed as her client through that whole time. But I can just imagine sometimes with two different races or ethnicities or backgrounds matching up in, in these establishment spaces, like what are clients going through? Are they worried they're not going to be seen? Uh, because we are all interacting with each other during these tense mm -hmm. times. So how is the space? You know, that's what I'm thinking about. It's awesome. This has been great. Thank you so much. I think this is exactly what we wanted this from this committee. Because, um, you know, we're regulators. So we're, we get in the mindset of like. Just establish something and that's. Yeah. Like I'm going to tell you once, and you're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if only, right? So um, I think this is, and, and I think I'm like a super DEI um, rock star. And so, but it goes to show we all have, like when we're having this conversation, I'm like, oh. So, We're all you. learning as it, we go. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no expert. Yeah. That's what gets me when people say, when I see these advertising for people, DEI expert, and I, and I think, I, I purposely want to figure out a scenario just to give them, just so like, you know, you're not an expert, but okay, whatever. So, yeah. All right, thank you so much. We will bring back a lot of information at, at our next meeting. Um, I'm seeing no public comments. So um, I'm guessing we don't have any public comments on the next agenda or on the, that are not on the agenda. Do we have any additional future agenda items? Yep. This has been great. We'll keep moving forward. I would like to maybe move forward with something specific for schools. 
um, because I think we could do a lot of encouragement at the school level as well that might help. So we'll we'll have that as well. Great. Future discussion. All right. Thank you so much. We are adjourned.